All right. Hey everybody, here we are, we're Tipsy Tagalongs once again. We're here at Be Here Brewing with Bob Nab. that's Nab with a K, and uh, we have Matt Smith and myself, Gary Moore. Uh, we're, uh, we're a subset of Jury More Often, and we're, we're really excited to be here. Yeah. The first thing that we want to talk about, though, is uh, how about... The how do you drink? You know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, responsibly. Responsibly, yeah. Always, so that's our first thing. You want to be, uh, if you want to drink and have fun, that's great. Uh, but don't drink and drive. Don't Please. drink and do anything that you know, like operate uh, heavy, heavy machinery. machinery. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think that's the first time we've done that one. Uh, but the, you know, basically, <laughs> you want to make sure that uh, you don't disturb the you know societal life right. by your drinking. Uh, have anyway, fun. Be responsible. So, uh, and you know. Just to let everybody know, we uh, we were at uh, what was oh my god, uh, you know, so we, you know, talking about last video, yeah, the last spring house spirits, yeah, spring house spirits, yeah, I was having a mind blank there, uh, yeah, so we were there a couple of weeks ago, and you can check that out. We were okay. there about a week and a half, we were uh, that's actually three weeks, and yeah. so about a week yep. and a half ago, we were actually in uh, the uh, par what do you call it? it's it's PDX, it's the Portland airport at Vino Volo talking about their wine, yeah. which was pretty cool too. But anyway, we're here to talk to Bob Nab, and we're gonna be talking about uh, the Be Here Brewing Company and how it got started, and we have some great wine that we're gonna, beer. wine, great beer, that, beer we're gonna, that we're gonna talk about. It's the uh, problem when you uh, when you go across a bunch yeah, of different it's just, type yeah. of beverages. My <laughs> last few weeks have been pretty crazy. So, uh, <laughs> so we're, we've got beer at we'll Be Here beer today. Brewing yep. Company, no no less. All right. So mm -hmm. so Bob, uh, start by talking about how Be Here got started. I mean, what were you? What were what was the um, motivation, the creation of bringing that to fruition? So I had been a, a home brewer for well over twenty years. It was a, a hobby that I picked up um, in the sort of late 1990s. Um, and it was something that I immediately took to. Now, my, my background is in science. And I like to think of brewing as being both an art and a science. And although I was not a chemist, and I wasn't strictly speaking a microbiologist, right. I had experience with both. I did a lot of biology. I actually worked in the pharmaceutical industry industry. Wow. And so I learned a lot about um, sterile technique and microorganisms and all the things that you need to do right. And laboratories? And laboratories. <laughs> oh my God, because guess what? The, that's a laboratory over there, you know? The brewery is a laboratory and uh, that makes it sound very glorious. Um, <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the back side of that, uh, the, the part about laboratories and the part about breweries and kitchens too, um, Half the job is cleaning. Yeah. Half the job is cleaning. Wow. It is not glorious. It is not fun. But it's the absolute necessary step to be successful in like, any one of those things. Like imperative. Because if yes. you don't clean the tank or the hoses or the, or, or the valves, what happens? Right. You can have contamination. You can have beers that you know just don't turn out at all like you expect. You can have beers go bad. Mm -hmm. um, you know, beer is a very stable beverage. Um, in a keg, it I lasts so. for yeah. months and months, and in some, in some examples, years. In bottles, it can last for years. Now, there are certain types of beers that you want to use more, right, right. You know, sooner after they're, <laughs> right. they're made, but others are very, very stable. So my background in science, you know, I think really fed into my hobby as a home brewer, and over the 20 plus years I was doing it, uh, it was sort of, you know, continual improvement, continual expansion, not necessarily in quantity, but in just doing in different techniques. things. Right. In technique. And, and, and that's the thing that I think a lot of people don't realize is that there's a, a wealth of things you can do with beer. Um, now, if you want to get strict, you know, strictly speaking, the German purity laws of beer are hops, water, yeast, and grain. Done. Uh, you know, and <laughs> they're still different. You can still make yeah. a lot of good beers that way. I mean, yeah, obviously yeah. the Germans have been doing it for a thousand years. Um, but if you open your horizons to the things that the Belgians do and the other Europeans, right. you know, and you start adding um, flavorings and fruit and other types of grain and 
um, just the wealth of things which are available now to make a variety wow. of unique beers. That's a lot. Um, it's a lot. That's a, so you know, it is I, a lot. So yeah. what, and what kicked off the hobby? What, where, well, where did the inspiration come to start brewing? So I was, um, I, I mean, I was never a sort of um, mainstream beer industry mm -hmm. kind of guy. Um, before craft beer was, was really a big thing, um, I, very, I leaned towards the imports a lot of the time. Um, there were some of the early examples of craft breweries that we were able to get some of. Um, I always give a shout out to Dock Street mm -hmm. from Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. they went out of business and, and then have you know, come back um, but that was a beer that had been around for you oh, know, yeah. Yeah. hundreds, a hundred years, and yet was making what really is a craft beer. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Um, and that was one that really, you know, was one of the beers that sort of got me started on these unique tastes of darker, richer beers and oh. things with a, a variety of flavors. So I was always leaning towards things which were a little bit out of the mainstream. And so being able to make my own beer made a lot of sense. I can try new things. I can make the kinds of beers I like yeah. without spending a fortune yeah. for those imported <laughs> Belgian beers. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, so I started, as many people do, with you know, a kit. Uh, my wife bought it for me for my birthday one year, and uh, right. you know, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's pretty fortunately, cool. Fortunately, my wife likes beer. So oh, that's helpful. <laughs> so she's yeah. benefited helpful. from the hobby and the business oh, nice. over yeah, the years yeah. as, as well. Um, so I was in the pharmaceutical industry for over 30 years and retired from that in 2017. Okay. Um, at the time, it wasn't that I was bored or that I needed things to, to do. I always find things to do, and there's always more things on my to-do list that I can ever get to. <laughs> uh, opening a brewery no, no. did not help with that to-do list, <laughs> I can tell you that. No, sure. Yeah, that decimated me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was always interested in, you know, sharing my beers. I, you know, if you homebrew, you probably give away, you know, three quarters of what you make sure because you want to make new things all the time yeah. and you just right. can't drink that much and yeah. you, you can't <laughs> continue to store the other stuff that right so um, I was very much interested in the variety of things I was very much into all the possibilities that came out of craft beer as craft beer had sort of wow. exploded in that time yes so I was interested in doing something on a larger scale not quite the scale that we're at here though I was thinking initially Oh, I'd like to have, you know, a one barrel system, 30 <laughs> gallons at a shot, right? right? Right. And, you know, Seems just simple, have a little right? tasting room for people, you yeah. know, be able to sell some in growlers to go and have a few seats for people to come in and drink, right? That was, that was where I was starting from. The quaint boutique um, scenario. At the time, my son Dan and uh, his partner, um, Mara Langley, uh, were both working for Victory. So I started right. to learn about, well, you know, that part of the business and they were very, both very customer facing, something I had no experience with. Yep. Um, they were very much into the beer culture that revolves around the craft okay. beer industry. So they were, you know, part of, you know, online forums and communities like that, that oh, okay. really spread the knowledge. And, and it really is a community, uh, the craft beer industry, is extremely collaborative and very mm -hmm. helpful. So they were both working for Victory, but interested in doing a little more. And so we started to talk about, well, what about a, a brewery? And uh, at one point during that discussion, I think it was in late 2017 or early 2018, um, they happened to, into a conversation and found out that this building, which was once the Avondale National Bank, yes. was available. Now, the, the building at the time had been a natural food store right, for I about three that. years, yeah. and the natural food store went out of business. The building is owned by the Bashiani family, which have Bashiani Foods, one okay. of the big, yeah, yeah. big mushroom local, company local distributors, group. local but also nationwide. Yes. Uh, yeah. and, um, right. and they had gotten into some property management, and they had bought this building and all of the great parking that's out in the back. There is um, some great parking out back. And they were looking for somebody to come in and put something like this in here. They even had the idea of a, of a brew pub. 
And I was at least, you know, well, that's a big building. I was a little skeptical, but when I came and saw the building for the first time and there were still all the racks and shelves and lots oh. of clutter left over from the natural <laughs> right. food store, but I came in here and it was like, oh my God, you see the, the building from the outside has yeah. the beautiful stone yes. that was built in 1895. It's impressive. Yeah. And that part of the building is pretty much intact. But then there were all these expansions to the building and yep. there's a lot of space. We have a lot of floor, floor space here, a lot of things we could do things with. And so you've got this beautiful facade on the front facing route, Pennsylvania Route 41, yep. Pennsylvania Avenue, the main street through Avondale. You got all, all that frontage, but then in the back you've got all the parking and it's like, this is an ideal spot for a brew pub. And, yeah. and a second front. To, to be honest right. with you, it's not exactly bad to look in, no. you know, from the back to the front or from right. from the parking lot to the back. So, so uh, okay. once I saw the building, it was kind of like, can we make this work? And the bottom line was it was just too good to pass up. All right. Um, now, it, cool. it took some time. Mm. And, uh, you know, we'll talk in a little bit, I think, about the process of opening, the process of remodeling and things like that. Yeah, that's... But I've been talking for a while and I'm, I'm getting a little thirsty. And I'm, I'm sure you guys are yeah, too. Which is what just, we're here for, right? Which, we want know, to share with everybody. Si sitting here with a beer in front yeah. of Yeah, I know. I'm my, my, extremely I'm, tempting. I was. My mouth was watering while I was looking at it. And, and uh, no offense, I'm, I'm actually very fascinated because what you've been talking about is it is the you know it, it it has a lot of substance because people don't realize what it takes to actually open a business right. a lot of times and the, the it's not just the vision i mean a vision is great but it you know it requires all sorts of things like money and a property and you know being able to renovate and having it look good and all that stuff but again all right so now i'm diverting let's talk <laughs> about this this first selection so, what do we have so this first selection here is our summer fest beer and it is a Marzen style lager. Okay. Um, it's very much like Oktoberfest. Ooh. And um, I'll tell you the story from that after you have a little sip. Oh, yeah. So, oh, Marzen yeah. style lagers Ooh. are, if not my favorite, really then good. certainly very high up on my list of favorite beers. I would always anticipate the time when Oktoberfest beers would start showing up on the shelves okay. and you could get three or four or five yeah. different ones and, you know, and have them for the next it couple really of It really does months. taste like an Oktoberfest beer. Well, this one's very close to Oktoberfest. So we opened in November of 2019. Um, November meant that we missed out on Oktoberfest that year. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And the we, summer and the summer. And so anytime and, you open this kind yeah. of a business in the fall, late fall, it's a long winter. Yeah. yeah. Well, you do have the Christmas season I and mean, a lot of people going out to party. And and anytime you open something like this, there's a lot of excitement around it. Too. That's true. That's true. But I like Oktoberfest style beers, Mars and style beers so much that having missed out on making Oktoberfest that year, I decided to make a winter fest. Mm. And um, shortly after we opened, I brewed it, and it came out in January of 2020, right, which, right. We'll, again, we'll get to in a little bit. Um, <laughs> Everybody but, knows what's going on. But the Winterfest yeah. was something I had brewed at home, and it was a, an Oktoberfest-style beer, but made a little bit stronger, yeah. a little bit richer, yeah. so more dark caramelized grains to give it an, an even roastier flavor, but still with that mellow... Um, lagered flavor yeah, of the yeah. Oktoberfest style beer. So that was our winter fest. Wait, it's not on our list. It's it? not on our list because... <laughs> I, I, I still want it to be on our list. Because it's 90. Because <laughs> we're about as far away from winter. I was going to say, because it's so, 90 yeah, degrees sorry, outside, Gary. You want to come back in January? I we'll, am we'll, coming back we'll, in January. We'll, we'll Gary, I'll, uh, no, I'll, be back I'll, I'll cut up some bits of paper and throw some confetti at you like snow, and then we'll break out the winter fest. So winter fest was <laughs> our first so Mars in here at Be Here Brewing. Okay. And then as a couple of months went by and, you know, I got a lot of compliments on it, it was like, okay, well, I don't want to wait until October. I don't want to wait until September for the next to do Marzen. another one. Sure. So oh. I came up with, okay, I'm going to make a Summerfest. Summerfest okay. was meant to be the opposite of the Winterfest compared to Oktoberfest. Sure. A little bit lighter, a little bit lower ABV, although it's not that different. Um, and, and it is a very light color. Mm -hmm. Now, Oktoberfest style beers do come in a range of colors. So um, 
you know, this is still, this could still be an Oktoberfest. Yeah, it looks similar to that. But the, uh, the Summerfest it, it we, brought out, lighter, we brought out in the middle of the pandemic um, and, and had it for sale both to go and when we were able to open up outside, it was a very popular beer garden. Beer. Yes, it was. And then, um, of course, you know, during the summer of 2020, I, you know, getting ready for the fall and getting ready for Oktoberfest, I did brew Oktoberfest for 2020 then. Right. And, and I've brewed it ever, ever since. And in fact, it's in the beer brewery right now, going through the lagering phase. Okay. Um, it'll get kegged in a couple more weeks and it'll be come out. I like to bring Oktoberfest out in the middle of September. I which know is, there are. Which is where it, September is when Oktoberfest occurs that's in Germany. when it starts. Just in case you didn't realize that. Yep. So, yeah. So, Summerfest is the one that's our Mars and that's on tap right now. Um, and again, it does have all the characteristics of an Oktoberfest lager. Um, it's very mellow. It's very drinkable. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's very, one of my favorites. Yeah. It's smooth. It's yeah, very smooth. It's really good. Yeah, so I'm, I'm liking that. With um, with this, before we get into some more of like the the building and the and the kind of working through remodeling things like that, if someone were to come in, someone like me who doesn't live in the area and hasn't been here before, what would you want them to take away from be here brewing? Well, um, you know, and 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 a Saturday afternoon in August, you know, see, we have a light crowd here. Mm -hmm. um, this is, you know, if, if we get into September, October, or in the, certainly late spring, even into June, you know, we usually have people here, you know, pretty much all afternoon, mm -hmm. Saturdays, and uh, we do get a, a dinner rush. Um, as much as I never really desired to be in the restaurant business, when we started to talk about what would yeah. make a brewery or brew pub successful, yeah. good food is one of the things yep. that not only right. brings people right. in, but it keeps people right. there longer. So now yeah. I want to tag on something. I, it t typically in this time of year, wineries, breweries, distilleries, it, people are going to the to the shore, to the beach. Yeah. Uh, there's a different yep. people learn that. Um, but is. they're going to the shores of the beach. They're going to the pool. They're out backyard barbecuing. So they're coming in here mostly for like growlers and stuff like that. Uh, but here's your best opportunity to get some really, really personal service. Because I will tell you, I've been in here when it's been a little lighter crowd, and you get phenomenal service. And the people who work here are really nice. I have not met a not nice person here. We've that, tried that, to have okay not only a double negative. I don't know, but we'll let it go. No, we've we've tried to have people who are not only friendly and welcoming, yeah. but also who are very invested in the craft beer industry. They, you yeah. know, many of them have worked at other places or even work at other places currently as well. Um, and they like to talk about beer. They right. love when somebody, you know. And typically that's what they sit at the bar. People sit at the that's bar, they, they order their they flights, the yeah. you know, but, but I think our, our servers will always take the time if somebody says, well, what's that beer like? And give, right. you know, we give little samples for exactly. people to taste. And, and then again, on, especially on the, the slower times, um, middle of the day, you get a lot of people drinking flights, and you get you know that ex ability to experience a, a few different I, beers. At one so time. you don't have to just taste one. Like we're we're taste, we're doing the same thing. We're basically doing a, a flight through the yep. course of this uh, podcast. But and so you don't have to just do one. You can do a whole flight, and you can find out. You know, it's just like a wine tasting, if you will. It's a beer tasting. You can find out what you like, and and uh, you know. Well, you know which ones you prefer. Yeah, I appreciate a good flight. Yeah, exactly. Because yep. it really does. It especially just, if it I hones, haven't been it to. It you in on your favorite. Beer yeah, especially that, if I haven't been location. to a, uh, a location before. If it's my first time trying mm -hmm. their beer, uh, wine, whatever, uh, I prefer to start with a flight because it really it gives me a background of yeah all the beer that you could get there and then you can hone in on what your favorites are right and, and i've done flights here and it's been pretty good because the service that ever people tell you oh well you know what what, what do you like what do you you know mm -hmm. and they'll boom and they'll give you a mm -hmm. really nice flight mm -hmm. that's yeah. customized and so i think one of the things i immediately want people to take away from is that unless you're not a beer drinker we've got a beer for everyone right okay i know some smaller breweries and and even places that are larger than us where there might be half the beers or IPAs. Yeah. Um, you might get IPAs and a stout and a couple other things, and it's like, 
that's what we have, you know? Right, right. We have 12 beers on tap. I was going to um, ask. We have 12 that's beers on lot. tap. When, when we were planning things and I was thinking about eight taps, my son Dan said, that's not enough, get, get 12. And now I wish I'd gotten 16. Good for, <laughs> good, good for Dan. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So but, yeah. I wish I'd gotten 16, and that's illustrated in part by the beer that we're going to have next. But but you made a, you made the comment about if you even if you like if you don't like beer you have a beer for everyone, but I also see that you have wine over there and there is stuff you local. guys have, you have local, local so we've stuff got, for we've got, people who don't drink beer. Exactly, we've got yeah. we've got wine from two local wineries, um, Acadian Wine, which a wine company which only opened um, about a, a little over a yeah, year it's ago. A year. It's a year. Um, so they're in what was formerly the Croix Creek yeah. Vineyards. Um, very close to here, and we buy wine from them, and they buy beer from us, and so you can actually enjoy our beers there. Yeah. Um, and then the other yeah. winery is, is my wines here ever since we opened. Um, great family, great uh, guys who are Zach. really into the yeah. Zach. And, Zach and, is yeah. great. So we, Zach did a podcast <laughs> yeah. back in January. It was, I think it was our first tips yeah. and I feel like podcast. somewhere or yeah. another, Wayvine so, always comes up in oh, one. No, no, no. Oh, it was or our, every other podcast that we have, we, Wayvine is somehow we, tagged. Yeah, yeah. They're like, every what? single no, one. It was, he was at the April 1st yeah. podcast. That's where he was. Yeah, the TriWine. The TriWine pod, podcast. And, and yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. And that's actually where we met. Yeah. Okay. We met at, at Wayvine. Yep. Uh -huh. um, and, it, you know, it was a great story that we have, I think, on our introduction podcast. Yeah. We did it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is great. So you got another one, and so, this is so this is why you wish you had 16 taps. Right, because right now this is a beer which we have had since the day we opened, and this is our. Ooh, I like that. So is this it, is this right. is this beer patient zero? Did you, did you hear that opening? It's a, it's the sound of beer. Was this was this the first beer brewed here, or it was? Okay. This was the number one batch when I you know we got the the, the system installed here and hooked up and fired up. Um, Moe's Irish Red was one that I really wanted to make on the five barrel system that we have right next to okay we're, and we're this sitting. is like a stable and this is a stable but we don't always keep it on tap because it's it's not exactly what people think of as a summertime mm -hmm. beer oh okay yeah right? yeah that makes and sense. and so when we've got more beers and we've got taps uh, we'll often just have it in cans sure. people who know it and love it will um Let's show that label we'll yeah. still um you know come in and do you have any mo's and we have it we so we can't do it I in flights it. when we're doing it in cans yeah. but but people who know it and you know will 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 do that and we'll keep it in the to go fridge often as well. So now the Moe's Irish Red and it's named after my wife Maureen who goes by the nickname Mo. That's okay. what all the all the grandkids See, just call her Mo. Everything has a story. Yep. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Moe's Irish Red was one of what I'm going to call our wedding beers. Yes. Ooh. And about eight years ago, these are literally completely ago, different. Yeah, they are totally different. Yeah. And they're both like it's a big jump they're from both one equally yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. And um, my daughter got married, and her, at the time, future father-in-law also was into home brewing. Okay. And we decided to team up and make the beers for the wedding reception, huh. and we ended up deciding on six different beers, two which were named after the bride and groom and two after each of the parents of the bride and groom. Oh, wow. And so I had mine, and Moe's Irish Red was named after my wife, who nice. is of Irish descent. I love the color. And yeah. um, it's a beer that I had been making for years, and I absolutely love it. Uh, it's the only one that I would say will compete with the Marzins for my top of the, mm. top of the list. A lot of really good flavor in there. So yeah. It's, yeah. it's a very, it's a malty beer. Mm -hmm. It's, as mm -hmm. you said, it's, it's, you know, it's a reddish color with, you know, um, so there's a lot of caramelized grain in there. Right, right. I do use an Irish yeast just to keep it authentic. Nice. And, you know, I have people come in and say, oh, this is better than Smittix. Yeah, <laughs> you know, or it's better than Killian's. It's like, well, please, if you said it wasn't better than Killian's, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I would be offended. Yeah, but exactly. It's a beer I've always or loved. Or I should quit. And, and um, like, again, this is, this is really if I had enough. 16 taps, I would make sure that it's always on tap. It'll be on tap again in the fall. Okay. So, it, so what the 12 taps does offer you is the ability to, to cycle, so, yeah, to rotate. cycle through the seasons. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, so again, yeah, like the, for those people who love their Moe's Irish bread, 
they can still get it, but it's just not out of the tap. Right. Right. And this is, by the way, it's you know, freshly opened yeah. beer. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty good. So it's not like you're missing a ton. Yeah. No. No. I mean, it's you know, it, it is still true draft beer. Yeah. So it's never been pasteurized or right. exposed exactly. to heat. We keep our beers, you know, below 40 degrees from the time that they're packaged, whether that's in a keg or a can, until they're, you know, they're served. Right. Now, do you do, Everything's kept cold. Do you do the packaging here? We do. We have okay. a small canning line from American Canning uh, Company. And um, we, we at, currently, all we're doing is selling from here. We've, okay. we'll, we'll use it for some of our outside events as well. We use cans of beer. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had discussions with some local distributors and local right, outlets right. to be able to sell our beer. And, and that's sort of just always one step away. We're, yeah. we're catching up on a lot of things to get to that kind of capacity. Yeah, I, so there's a lot going on with that because is the minute you start selling yeah. it, at, at a larger distribution, uh, then there's a lot that you have to, like, you yeah, really everything amps up. Just, yeah, yeah, you just right. have to keep yeah. people. people There's never that, ending. That, that type of expansion is is uh, potentially right. disastrous if right. if you don't if you don't plan it and organize it correctly. Exactly. Um, and so I want to ask um, you you brew everything. So what you can't see here, you're just looking at the table. This is the stage where um, musicians play. Um, it, the actual production is behind or to the right of Bob. And is that all of it back there? So that is all of it. It all occurs there. It's temperature controlled. Obviously. So I have a five barrel brew system. It's an electric brew system. So okay. the, the heating of the water and the boiling of the, the, the wort is all with electric heating elements. And th so those are actually three tanks, a, a hot liquor tank, a mash tun, which is where the hot mm -hmm. water and the grain are mixed. And then the liquid is pulled off of the mash tun, the bottom of the mash tun, into the boil kettle. Right. So that's the hot side. The, the wort gets boiled, usually for at least an hour, um, sometimes as long as an hour and a half or two hours. And, um, and then at the end of that time, the wort is cooled down right. to get it down to below 80 degrees, at which time it's transferred into the ferment, one of the fermenters. Okay. And that's where you add the yeast. So yeast doesn't like anything too, too hot. Sure. Right. right. Um, so then I've got three fermenters, oh. and I've got two bright tanks or finishing tanks where the beer gets carbonated, and then everything from the bright tanks is going into kegs wow. or, or directly into cans. Right, right. Um, so, so that's the, the system. I mean, you know, again, we were faced with um, remodeling this place to make it um, suitable for a large number of customers, right. but also a big enough brew system to be able to turn out the beer to supply us. Yeah. So how many chairs do you have here? Um, right now in this back room, it's only about 75, 70 or so. It's still a pretty good number Yeah, it's still a pretty, pretty good number of people but we that all, be here. Of course, we have the, the beer garden outside where we exactly. a similar number. And if we need to right. put more chairs out there, we do that sometimes. So, too. so that's so. a lot, you know. So yeah, you know, decent if amount of people. If you're thinking you're not going to get a seat because it's a quaint little boutique bar, yeah. Yes, it's a it's a quaint little boutique bar, but they have it's plenty plenty of, of, plenty of seating, which yeah. is great. So and you know, he, he was mentioning earlier, it's a it's a huge parking lot that, and part of it is shared with the post office. That's generally not open when you guys are open, it's, which it's is an really ideal good. situation. It really is. <laughs> yeah, uh, so it's perfect. You know, on so we're open from Wednesday through Sunday, closed Monday right. and Tuesday. I try and do most of my brewing on Tuesdays when we're not open. Um, the post office closes at 4:30. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday we open at four. Right. So very it's, little overlap. Literally, they perfect. close at noon on yeah. Saturday, I think, and we open at noon on so, Saturday. And so Sunday. by the time the parking lot fills up. Post office is yeah. way yeah. long been here, yeah, right. and people can spill over there, and yeah. it's a it's a lot of parking. It is a lot. It's of a parking. lot of parking, which yeah. is great. Oh, and, and oh, let's not forget. So it, this may be a really good time to talk about what happened in the spring of 2020, because it, as part of the bank, you also have a drive-through. Well, we have a drive-up lane. We don't have a drive-up window that completely. anymore. Yeah, so you actually, walked across it to get in. That yeah. is ridiculous. So, um, of course, COVID hit three months after we had opened. We opened yeah. uh, Black Friday in 2019, and by March 13th, 
Friday the 13th, Brutal. we had the news that Saturday was going to be our last day open, um, except for takeout. Right. Now, being new, we didn't have a lot of experience with takeout. You know, a few people would call and say, hey, can I get your food to go? And we would package it up. Right, right. Um, pandemic hit, and that was going to be the only game in town. And we, like many other businesses, were scrambling to get all the supplies you need. Paper bags got short supply and takeout containers. Because everybody wanted everyone, it. And yeah. Everybody needed it. Yeah. And uh, we didn't have our own growlers yet. We would fill other people's growlers. We didn't have the canning line or the crowler machine. We bought that during COVID um, and started wow. to do that. Oh. But, but as you mentioned, the drive up lane, um, that that ended up being ideal for curbside service. Right. So we had people call orders in or order online. They'd fill them at the bar. The kitchen would be, you know, really minimally staffed, but we'd have it ready and someone would run it out, put it in people's cars for them. It was like a personalized <laughs> Starbucks line, yeah. but with food and beer. And beer. That's it was, so awesome. It was killer. I, I remember doing it a couple of times yeah. during COVID. I'm like, this is like... Yeah. I died and went to heaven. It's like the perfect setup I, I for mean, that obviously, scenario. Yeah. Obviously, it's an unsustainable right. model forever. It is. But right. But to, for that to, scenario. To, to get through it. Yeah. You, you, you know, and we've talked about restaurant owners. Do what they've got to do. Yeah. So, but, to stay same open thing with, and with owning supply. A and, you, you do what yeah. you have to do to stay open. And and that was, that drive through was killer it, awesome. It was great. It really yeah. was. And, and the other thing that I have to give a shout out to the community here is that people supported us they yeah. knew we were a new business yeah they knew we were gonna like oh my gosh you're getting shut down three months after you open yeah it's an, in, and, that's an insane yeah. and people really process. made an effort to support us yeah. we had people who said you know i'm coming out every week to get takeout you know because yeah, yeah. they yeah. wanted us to make it through exactly. that experience. exactly so yeah. the, the and, community has been great and i will tell you the 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 times that we came through uh, there often were three or four cars in yeah. line. So, yeah. you know, it was a really good um, expression of community support. And I think, you know, I mean, they, basically, I think the community was saying, hey, we want you to be here to stay. Be here to stay. <laughs> oh, but, boy. oh, yeah, it was terrible. Sorry wow. about the dad joke, folks. Uh, you know, wow. I am a, a dad. All so, right. so let's move on to our third beer. We're going to let that one just <laughs> and, sail and, away. And, <laughs> and I think, you know, just talking about community kind of leads me into this is that we really feel we are part of this community here yeah and not just Avondale or not just you know this school district but you know southern Chester County this area mm -hmm. you know we feel like we we do a lot of things to support the community yes, yeah. in terms of uh, nonprofits and doing fundraisers here exactly people come in and 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 you know do things for their organization um, so we feel like we're part of community and we try and support as many as we do. Now, now this beer is not a benefit beer, that, but it is uh, a beer that we bring out. In, we've done it the last three years. We bring it out in June and it's our LGBT. Nice. Which actually stands for Lemongrass Belgian Triple. <laughs> I love it. And we bring it out in June for Pride Month because we welcome mm. everyone. We believe that the craft beer industry should be and is very welcoming and very inclusive. Sure. Yes. And, and this is our shout out to the LGBT community I love, um, that I love we it. support them and we love when they're here. And, you know, it's a great um, double so, entendre. So this is yeah. this is a Belgian triple. OK, um, Ooh. it's it's about eight percent alcohol. <sighs> Um, but it's brewed with lemongrass. Yes. And, and you might notice on your way out that we have a little flower bed on the right hand side and there's two beautiful lemongrass I, plants there and they'll be next year's LGBT. I actually Wait, noticed the really funny. flower bed, but not the lemongrass. Okay, well, you'll no take idea. a look. That yeah, that's awesome. A, so and that's what that's what. So this next is. year's lemongrass yeah. is already ready. One, one might say it's here. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is, this just keeps getting better, right? Mm hmm This is crazy. Yeah. Mm. Not a, not yeah. a letdown on any Too of Too much to food. this, and I'm going to have yeah. to uh, call my wife so I can, I can <laughs> yeah, drive responsibly. Yeah, I'm going to crawl back to Fishtown. <laughs> yeah, five, at, 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 at 8%, you know, you really uh, yeah. got to watch that. But this, this is really a nice, and, it, and uh, you know, I've noticed that all of the beer so far has been incredibly smooth. I, you know, so, you know, you can have a, and there's nothing wrong with a beer with a bite, mm -hmm. but all of these are really, they're very, um, 
they're very comfortable to drink. And I, and I don't know if you can use that as a word, but it's, you know, when you're drinking it, it just feels comfortable when you're drinking it. Like, this is great that I'm I mean, and, and, and three, three beers off the bat here, none of them have been the same. No, they're... I'm trying to highlight some of the, and they've the all and they've all and, been uh, very good. And and we'll we'll finish up yeah. with a couple of ideas. Normally, uh, normally you get to like the smaller yeah. breweries and things like that. They have like one or two that they're really good, and then the other ones they're trying some. I mean, that's three in a row that have keep, yeah. yeah. This just keeps going. So, yeah. So before we transition to the IPAs, we I also want to talk a little bit about our food, sure. and. Um, and, and give you guys a little sampling of one of my personal favorites. So here come some empanadas. This is pretty sweet. So, so these are chicken empanadas. Um, and thank you. All right. They're served with a, a little bit of a dipping sauce. Nice. Which has a little bit of spicy bite to it, but not much. Yeah. Is this the be here sauce? Uh, it's, a, it's a spicy version of it. Uh, oh, it's, it's a little spicier oh. than yeah. the, uh, okay. Yes. Sorry. Um, no, you want to take an empanada so, over there? So we, <laughs> that helps, um, right? That helps. <laughs> we are very lucky and very thankful to have um, Chef Maolo in the kitchen, running the kitchen now. Um, when we opened up, we were, we were working with uh, Carlos Vargas, who has mm -hmm. a couple shops in Kennett Square, and he helped us really get off the ground, and we had a menu that people liked, um, but was very difficult for us to continue to sustain in terms of always having trained cooks right, right. To, to make it. Um, so the, and in January, we switched and yeah. we, we hired Mayolo. And um, Mayolo previously had um, a restaurant, La Cucina Mexicana, in Jennersville oh. for many years uh, before selling that business. And um, his brother, Emilio, had cooked for us on and off um, beginning back in the pandemic and then uh, since then. And when we were looking for somebody to run the kitchen, Emilio recommended his brother, and we've been very wow. thankful to have uh, Mayolo cool. here. So that's pretty cool. Uh, these are a, a little bit warm, but they should have had a little bit of time to cool down. Oh wow! And these are one of my favorites. But um, so this is a chicken empanada. It's a chicken empanada. Okay. We do run specials sometimes where. Um, they will make mm. not only the chicken empanadas, but a jalapeno cheese and a mushroom and cheese empanada, and you can get a sampler of those. Right oh, now, we don't, have, so we don't have that uh, special on, uh, available right now because he's got four other specials available <laughs> right now. And um, so we have a mixture of entrees. We have some pub food like French fries and chicken fingers. Right. We also have a very delicious burger that they make. Um, mm -mm along with several Mexican entrees, um, tacos, burritos, chimichangas, um, tostadas will be another special that we have from time to time. Um, Thank you. So it has uh, the Mexican influence. Yes, yes, That's very much. Um, yeah, um, so not that, yeah, and I understand where you were coming from. I remember, you know, the, I think the, the favorite on the old menu was the beef dip. And, and I will tell you uh, from, I, we, we ate that a lot. But it, it looked complicated to make, to be honest with you. And so, it, you know, to get that consistency would be really difficult. And I think, but I think this is definitely, uh, you know, a, a good substitute for sure. I mean, this that's is fantastic. This yeah. is really good. Yeah. I mean, these empanadas are like spot on. These yeah. are great. And, and yeah. uh, um, so we do have a number of different, you know, starters, including the empanadas and some really delicious nachos and, um, you know, again, kind of fitting with the craft beer right. setting. Um, you have a group of people around a table, and you know, you share some starters and yeah. you pick an entree or two. You know, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, Again, we, we want to. You know, people ask me about the name "Be Here," and it's like we want to be a place where people want to be. Right. We want you to be here. Yeah. We want you to right. be here. When you're here, we won't, don't want you to worry about other things. We want you to think about right. being here and being in the moment, enjoying the camaraderie of your friends sure. and other people, enjoying the beer and, and enjoying the food. 
Yeah, so, it, and, I, and I guess my point about bringing up the, the other food that you've had on the menu is that no matter what food you're making, you want to make it to the top level quality. That's right. And, and, and I, you, know, we, you know, having been here several times, it, it's always spot on, and we love that. I mean, the consistency of having good food every time you go somewhere is important. I mean, and it's hard for a restaurant to achieve that, to be honest with you. A lot of restaurants achieve it most of the time, but then, Especially you know, if, if the food isn't your primary focus. Right? Yeah. So this is, this could, yeah. I mean, honestly, you could actually Fantastic. come here yeah. just to eat. You can. And I mean, not even drink. And, and we I do don't get, suggest like I said, that you don't drink. should have a beer, here. too, we, at we, least. We do get a little bit of a rush around lunchtime, a little bit of a rush around dinner time on the okay. weekends, and, um... Um, it's a really good yeah, I already ate mine. So, so <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't last. Two more, two more. So there's a, a couple more over. It didn't, there. it didn't last uh, long. But now I'm sure you need another sip of beer. Yeah, yeah. And and so I do want to, um, you know, finish up the, our our beer tastings with with two of our IPAs. Okay. And getting back to the idea of community and the things we do to support the community. Um, this beer is called Kim's Session IPA. Okay. And we brewed it as part of a program that's called Ales for ALS. Ah. Um, so this so is a benefit beer? This year? is a benefit beer. Okay. Now, I was unaware of this program um, until Jeff Norman, who has been the longtime organizer and head of the Kennett Brew Fest and Kennett Winter Fest, right, right. Um, unfortunately had um, ALS affect a beloved member of his family, his sister Kim. Right. And um, when Jeff, you know, did some things on his own, um, he did his own little ALS challenge of coming out to breweries and having somebody from the brewery pour beer over his head, you know, as a way of raising awareness and getting some donations right. to help his sister's cause at the time. Yeah. And then after, unfortunately, she passed away, he's become involved with promoting the Ales for ALS. And like Jeff, um, one of the major hop family hop companies in Washington State, which is where a lot of the U.S. hops are grown, oh, okay. had unfortunately had someone in their family contract or come down with wow. ALS, and they became very involved in supporting ALS research. Yes, their part of it is that they are donating tens of thousands of pounds of hops to breweries around the country every year. And wow. in return, those breweries agree to brew a beer, promote ALS for wow. ALS and donations for um, ALS research, and we give a dollar for every pint back to ALS for ALS. That's, That's really pretty cool. cool. So research. if somebody buys a pint of this today, they, a, a dollar, dollar goes to That's the really ALS cool. research. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, That's really pretty cool. cool. So, and so this is a proprietary hop blend that we used mostly in the, on the cold side, dry hopped and, and at the end of the uh, Whirlpool. And it's a delicious blend of hops. It's very fruity, yeah. but also- Like so much fruit. Yeah. yeah. Like it's not overbearing, but it's definitely prominent. Yeah. And so, you know, this beer has an incredible amount of flavor, yes. and yet it's a 5.1% ABV. Seriously. So it is a session IPA, one that we thought- we drink you know, this all day long. All day long, yeah. It's, yeah. It's an all day, it's, you know, <laughs> not, not, to borrow, not to borrow the trademark, but it is something you can do. Yeah. IPA. But I, I can't so. even believe that. I mean, yeah. it's 5.1. 5, 5. 5.1%. So, so again, and it's so nice and light. And, yeah. And Typ typically, I, I stay away from IPAs because they're, they're a little heavier than they're I want to drink. Yeah. It's not heavy at all. Yeah. This is great for a benefit beer. Do us a favor and come down here and buy yeah. some Absolutely. of this. Um, and a other beer as well but you know buy at least buy some of this so you can help at the uh als foundation or wherever i think that's where it goes yeah right? the ALS foundation. yeah so, so and and um you know again just to give another shout out to jeff norman and and the the kennett brew fest they're you know, great connection. people yeah they're, they're wonderful. wonderful great people and and prior to jeff's involvement I think he said there were three breweries in Pennsylvania that were part of this program. Mm -hmm. And I think he got 19 wow. additional ones in Pennsylvania, Delaware, awesome. New Jersey yes. uh, to participate in the Ales for ALS program yeah. through his connection with all these breweries from the Kennett Brew Fest. Oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah. he connects with a lot of people. Yes. But, you know, that's a big tribute so. to him, you know, yeah. and, and his, um, 
you know, his ability to get, gather people together in the community because the brew fest, which people, we've been uh, yep. to, the, to the Kennett Winter Fest and the Kennett Summer Fest. Very and, different feels. And, and yeah, there, you know, <laughs> it, but it's all but yeah, local yeah. breweries and, and distilleries and wineries yep. and cideries. And yep. It's all local people. And it's really an awesome, uh, uh, another awesome tribute to the community and yeah. what the community does to help each other. And yeah, it, you that's, know, been the, that's been the biggest thing. That's honestly, has been the biggest thing that I've noticed since doing this with you yeah. is that wherever we go, the community around the distilleries, the wineries, the breweries, yeah. the, everyone is so in touch with each other and helping each other and there for, and it's, it's kind of impressive to see that people that could easily be competitors are actively trying to help each other yeah. build that community better they're team yeah. members they're, yeah they're, you it's, know, it's, it's like, insane it, it's almost like you know they're working together as a team everybody yeah. and and it's pretty awesome because you know you could get you know you got the you got the wine tours and you've got you know i don't know if you guys do a beer tour or not but we don't but we've we've talked about it you know so uh again you know we have several connections friends with uh Braylock Brewing and Kent right, Brewing right. Company. Mm -hmm. uh, Victory's back open again, you know, after being shut down by their their problems in in Kennett Square. Right. Um, now we have a brewery in West Grove, Blondes and Brunettes. Oh my gosh! Yeah, um, yeah. Newt is great. So unfortunately, the the two that were in Oxford are both now one closed and one moved to Maryland. Right. Um, but again, we have you know a little bit of a nucleus here in Southern Chester County, which you wouldn't of think would happen. I mean, people yeah. look at Southern Chester County and they're like, yeah, there's nothing there. Sure. <laughs> but on the other hand, there really is. Yeah. And now this is the Kim Session IPA. Yes. Okay. So. Wow, this is so. This is really good. Yeah, I'm 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 really loving the diversity of the beer. Yeah, that's you. Thank you. I mean, you so you, you did I mean, some good picks here. I and think. that's one of the things I really wanted to highlight. Um, a statement of a beer like for said, everyone is not beer for, is not incorrect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think we'll have one more in just a couple yeah. No, of no, minutes. no. We're in. We're um, not in a rush. So no. So you guys, I, it's I I really love how um, you know we've been. You know, we've been following, my wife and I have been following you since you opened. We were incredibly excited because it's literally only 10 minutes from our house. And, hmm. you know, how cool is it? Now, we even, to the point where we even came down yesterday at like, it was like 2.30. And I opened, I, I looked at the door and I'm like, oh crap, they're not open yet. So they opened at 4 and I'm here at 2.30. And I'm like, well, that's not going to work. <laughs> and, and so, and if I had been here working in the brewery, I probably would have like, you know, set you up. But, which uh, is which is the epitome of every yeah. small business owner yeah. is that even though you're here off hours, they're willing to try yeah. and help in whatever that way they. But I wasn't expecting that to be honest with you. It was my fault that I didn't check the hours, and so I came by because, uh, you know, uh, and honestly, what I was trying to do was I was actually I wanted to buy some uh, a 64 ounce growler to share i went out with some friends oh, last uh -huh. night yeah. to, to somebody's house and i wanted to share that with them to so they could actually experience the beer that's that's here because it's pretty good yeah beer, you know Thank and you. we've had four and and my my former favorite is not even on your list so you have um the north of here right <laughs> So I think this, this may be one of my new favorites, the Kim Session. Um, but North of Here, I think, do you still have it on tap right now? We do. North okay. of Here is, it was one of the beers we started out with. Um, it is our New England style IPA. Right, right. Um, and, and just a little, you know, since, since you bring it up, I, I can't resist but tell the story of the name of North of Here. <laughs> Thank you. All right, there so, you go. So, right so <laughs> North of you know, so... Um, you know, for people who aren't really into IPAs, I think a lot of people had their, their minds changed when the New England style IPAs came out because a lot of people thought of bitter of uh, IPAs as those bitter beers yes, that yes. make you yeah. make a face when you drink them, and, and yeah, it, they're all about the hops. And you had to like it, they, even though you didn't like yep. it. Yeah. And they are all about yes. the hops. Uh, Been you there. Know, hops have a tremendous variety of flavors that they can impart. Um, but what the, some of the breweries in New England came up with was the idea that you don't have to get the bitterness to have the flavor. 
And the, what's different in right. the process is where you, um, where, where in the process you add the hops. So, like I said, there's a hot side, there's a boiling process okay. in the making yeah. of beer. When you add the hops during that boil, or for the entire period of that boil, it extracts certain chemicals in the hops, right. which create the bitterness. Sure. Then when you add hops later, at the end of the boil, or during the whirlpool, or in the fermenter, what's called dry hopping, um, you extract the flavor and sometimes even more just the aroma yes. of the hops, right. but not the bitterness. And that became known as the New England style IPA. Um, they're often called hazies because mm -hmm. right. the people in New England said, well, we don't have to make these beers clear. They can be <laughs> hazy. You, know, they get, you, got all these right. hop you got all these hop particles floating around. They make they make it a little bit hazy. Oh, that's funny. And so that's where the north of here came from. But because we are in the middle of Philadelphia Eagle territory, yep. and I'm a lifelong Eagles fan, yep. go Eagles. We could not go ever acknowledge New England oh, that's as true. having. Very fair. And yeah. Instead of calling it a New England IPA, we call it North of Here. Uh, nice. Uh, oh, I love that. And that's I our. Love that. That's so, our. Rub. So that's a football rub. So nice. I, I really do appreciate that. Yeah, I do. That explanation. Yeah. yeah. And I identify with that explanation yep. because we've got a pretty good. Uh, yeah, as an Eagles fan, I'm I'm here for that. I'm yeah, here for that. Because it looks like a good season's coming up. So I sure hope so. Yeah, it, it, it's very promising. But yeah, I mean, so far, so the north of here uh, it was that. And, I, you know, I really do like that because it does have that. That's a lot of good flavor. And it's it, like you said, it's not bitter. And, you, you know, it's one of those things where you can just, you know, sit and enjoy. Yeah. And yeah, I'm, I'm torn right now between the lemongrass and the and that first right? IPA. Right? Yeah. So far. I mean, I have again, not. very different, very different, but both so good there is literally something for anyone yeah. who drinks beer even in these five i'm pretty sure you know because Thank this you. is you know you, you, even at 5.1 it's a really nice taste and and honestly i don't have to get drunk to drink beer that's no. right you know i mean that's not that's not my purpose my purpose no. is to enjoy whatever i'm drinking yeah. and so oh, i i love the mini so, head so this mm -hmm. this last one is not a New England style IPA. It is a West Coast IPA. But having learned from the whole experience of not a lot of people really like that super bitter. Yeah. Taste. Now, we, I will make a very high inner bitter IPA from time to time. But the one that people keep coming back and asking for is our West Coast IPA that's kind of in the middle range of bitterness. Okay. And this is our Watercrest IPA. Mm -hmm. It's about 6.4% right. alcohol. Um, it is a mixture. It, it, is high, it highly features two hops, which have, have become just incredibly popular in the craft beer industry, and that's Citra and Mosaic. And okay. you can't walk into a beer store and look at a, a, a shelf of beer without finding you know, a dozen beers that have Citra in them right, right away, and probably an, another half dozen have Mosaic. And that's the two hops that are highlighted in this. And have this, you had this one before? So I, ha I have, actually. Okay. All right. Yeah, I have. It's confusing to me <laughs> because the smell of it makes me think it's going to be a very aggressive IPA. And then I took a sip, okay. and it is very light and refreshing. Again. It's, it's, again. It's and a, it's really confusing to me. So it's a West Coast IPA, but I like to say it's a balanced yeah. West Coast IPA. I was yeah, not expecting the so taste good. after taking a sniff of it. I was not prepared for it to be that refreshing. Didn't come on strong. No, yeah. no. Yeah, it, it, it was very confusing. So. In a good way. In and, a very good way. And this one we've had for about three years now. Yes. Um, no, no. I'm, Is it three or Two. Two, yeah. Two years. That's, yeah. it's, we've had it for two years now, and month after month, it is always at the top of our... Yeah, it's so I, th I think that one just took I think that one just took the table for me. Or, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. This is... Uh, wait, are we going to start a new thing? I think we might have to. I think this, I think Ma Matt's favorite. I think we might have to. We're going to start yeah. with Matt's favorite. Yeah, yeah I, think, is, I think we might have to. All right, all right. Yeah, that one, that one definitely won it for me. Okay, so we have right now the Watercrest IPA. Mainly because it was so Matt's unexpected. Favorite. And, and Matt's 
Matt normally doesn't gravitate gravitate mm -hmm. towards IPAs, no, right? I don't. So, I don't typically. So, but this is. Oh, yep. It is so good. Yep. So there, if you're someone who doesn't like IPAs, come try these. Yeah. The, yeah. You these you are could be you IPAs. could be swayed. Yeah, and they're they're really they're really good. Um, they're good blends, mm -hmm. and all five of these have a, been a completely different taste. Yeah, is what I really yeah. love about coming here because you, if you're in a different mood when you show yeah. up, yeah, because you can be in a different. Yeah, mood. you can come. You're you like, can oh come. My God, I don't, want, you know, I want something light today, or oh, I want something that's easily really come light. twelve times because there's twelve different well, beers yeah, on tap. You know, if you only get four <laughs> beers in a flight, you know, you you have to come three times just yeah, to get all just twelve, all 12 beers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. And then, and then even at that, you might have to buy a can on your way out yeah. to uh, experience the uh, Mose yeah. Red Ale off season. Yeah. So, but th it's good stuff. I mean, you know, if you think about it, twelve. First of all, twelve beers is a lot of beer. It's a lot of beer. That's a on lot tap. of beer. Yeah. So it's a lot of opportunity, a lot of uh, a lot of choices. Um, you know, I have trouble choosing between three things, let alone twelve. It's uh, like the old saying: if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Yeah, try, if you try, try, try your again, first yeah. beer and it's not good, or you don't like it. There's 11 others to go through to find the one that you like. Yeah, and I'm, uh, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know where I am because I liked all five of those. So, so uh, I'll tell you what one of the challenges for me has been is um, most breweries, when they start out, you think, oh, we'll have three or four flagship beers. Right. Yeah. We'll have, you know, three or four that... We'll make on an annual basis. Right. Yeah. That's season, typically my experience. Right. And then yeah. you have, you know, a few other taps that you just sort of like mix and match, whatever, yeah. you know, right? The problem I've had is that, you know, I'll make something, it's like, okay, this is going to be a one off batch. You have to make more of that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Then you yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. oh, you don't have that again. You know, as someone that works in marketing, we call that a good problem to have. <laughs> well, yeah. it's a good problem to have. But, That's why I but, wish I had six. So whenever, caps. whenever I had someone that would say we have too much content. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good problem to have. Yeah, and and that's kind of the, the that's kind of a nice thing. So you're you're in the you're in your beer laboratory and you're tinkering and you find this really cool one off, and you think I'm just gonna make this yeah. and see what people think, and then the next thing you know it just takes off. Yeah, it, you're right. It's a it, it's a really cool and it and it's very flattering to be honest with you when that happens because yeah. that means people love they don't just love the standard twelve. They love everything you're putting out. Yeah, right. which is really that's that's very indicative of your quality as a brewer. Yeah, and yeah. it's a yeah. very nice compliment. Yeah. to be here brewing because every time you put out another beer, people are like, people are going to be when, yeah. When are you bringing that? Back? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and when you said, oh, you know, let's let's sample four to six beers, you know, and I thought about what would be a good balance of things. I com you know, I completely also you know shied away from. Two, another style of beer that, you know, again, people have really enjoyed, and that's sours. Right. Mm. Um, right. And I occasionally like first, a good sour. When yeah. we first opened up, we didn't have a sour, and we didn't have 12 beers either, so yeah. we were buying beers from other breweries yeah. to have a sour available. And then I started experimenting a little bit with the sours, and um, a, a little over a year ago, I made our the first batch of our... Wild berry sour oh. Yes. And yes. Um, wild I, berry sour I, beer. I, yes, I actually please. Tempted to, I was tempted to get that one up here just because it's got a beautiful little pink tinge to it as well. Oh, you know? yeah. Well, um, I'll, uh, we have, I'll, so we I'll have, have one after okay. and take so, a photo so for have, our social. So we have the wild berry sour <laughs> And then we also have a lime lager on tap okay. over the summer. Yeah. And although that's not a sour, it's intentionally made with just a little bit of tartness. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because of the lime. So people say, oh, I don't like sours. But it's like, well, do you like anything that's tart? It's like, well, sure. You know, it's like, and they'll try that. It's like. Do you ever, do you ever take a lime and shove it in a beer? You right. Know, probably it's, like it's this. It's very. Yeah. 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 yeah like, um, right, but with, right? but I'll say that our lime lager has a lot more body and a lot more malt hidden right. behind it. Yeah. Than what those beers sure yeah need. oh sure those yeah. beers that need a lime yeah <laughs> they, they, yeah you're not putting the lime in the beer so because it's it's so helping you're putting yeah. it in because it needs it shout out to my son yeah. he goes if your beer needs fruit yeah you shouldn't you drink shouldn't it. drink it <laughs> yep so yep so those those are two two of the two other beers that we have oh, on, I love that on, on tap right yeah, now yeah. and and the other one that of course I didn't pick for our our tasting today but has become 
despite all, you know, thoughts about what works in what season, right. I cannot take our beware imperial stout oh, off the right. menu. See, and that's right. something, that's oh, one that I can't, I, have, I don't get behind is stouts. Oh, I have. Uh, that stout, I've tried a, co I've, I've tried I've a couple had. times, but whenever I drink a stout, it feels like I just ate a full course meal. Well, it is. That's yeah, exactly yeah. what it is. So just It's stop, like drink one stop, and done. Stop eating food <laughs> yeah. and drink the yeah, stout. Yeah, don't, don't eat your... for an entire day and then drink <laughs> a stout. You'll be or, good to go. Or if you really need a meal... Take a imperial stout with a scoop of vanilla ice cream. Oh, I Let bet you tell. that's good. You, I've had the stout here. It is really, yeah. It is. I, it's so it, it it's still heavy. Yeah, sure. Because yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Because that's the stout's stout stout. character. But, yeah. But it's so good. I mean, yeah. it's so, the, it's so tasteful. It's, it's a great way to finish the evening. It, yeah. You know, even yeah, if yeah, yeah. A, even if it's just a, a small pour. Yeah. The yeah. Eight ounce glass or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So it's I, like I, the I dessert really beer. I, I really love it. Yeah. Couldn't I mean, have said it better. Yeah. And so <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up, to be honest with you, because you do have a great stout here. And I, we don't want anybody to go away thinking, oh, we didn't say anything about a stout, you know. But we, you, you got that. That's part of the. That's part of the big flavor yeah. profile that they have here at Be Here Brewing. Yeah, I think, and I think that's really what I've tried to, to bring out, and yep, I think you, you guys have, have done a great job in, in, in bringing it out. Is that variety is really what makes craft beer, yes, you know, yes. so interesting and so appealing, and you can go to a different brewery every week, and there's always something a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's that's what we really strive for here. Yeah, and uh, no, well, I feel yeah. like I feel like you could come here a different day of the week pretend to be someone else and have that variety without having to go to another brewery. Are we, are, are we just we're, disguises. We're really going there. Yeah, disguises. <laughs> we would recognize Gary. Yeah, yeah. Everybody recognizes Well, there's a Gary. there's a there's a there's a there's a height requirement for and, Gary. Well, and I'd be remiss if I didn't actually, you know, call out the fact that not only are we sitting on the stage where we sometimes have music, but that sometimes music has been Gary Moore. Which I have yet to hear, you Gary. Have, I'm so upset really? about this. Yeah, I haven't, still haven't heard yeah. you play. Oh uh, well, you know, there's time left. Disappointed. Yeah, I'm so. still, I'm still alive. I mean, I would hope so. Yeah. Okay, well, so we're gonna have to talk about your calendar. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll catch up with that one. Yeah. Sure. But this has really been great. I, I, yeah. Thank you, thank you for dedicating an hour to us. Yeah. We appreciate that very much. We love the brewery here. We love the beer. Yeah, I'm a the fan. Food. I mean, and the guy behind the bar. Uh, what's his name? Vic. Vic. He just did a great job. Yeah, it was bringing great. everything out. It's almost uh, like someone was queuing him up, but yeah, I don't think anyone was. I think maybe, maybe. I don't not, know. Maybe, but anyway, he did a great job bringing it all out, and uh, we want to, you know, give a shout out because a lot of the people who work here do a really, really good yeah. job, and they work hard, and it's a great thing. So, yeah. if you got anything else to say? No, I just hope that um, you know if you're hearing this and you've never uh, been through Avondale and seen our beautiful building, that you'll make the trip here. Um, come into Southern Chester County to go to Longwood. We're not that far away. Oh, and the parking's free, and by the, the way. Parking is free, and it's, yeah, that's yeah. nice. You know, come so, out and see us, and we hope you know we hope yeah. you can. There is a beer you. here for you. Yeah, if you drink beer, there's there's beer. one here for and, you. And yeah. what a, you at know, least. And so you're gonna you're gonna have a good time yeah. eating, eating and drinking if yep. you come out here. So I, I love that, and I appreciate the fact that you guys created that environment. And uh, it's really cool that that was literally yeah. your goal was to create that environment. So uh, with that, we're come gonna, out, bring friends, make friends. Yeah. 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 So we're gonna we're gonna. Sign off on the Tipsy Tagalongs podcast yep. right now. We thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, saw that. Can, yeah, you Everyone that. saw that. I yeah. did it like three times during the podcast. <laughs> so, you know, we appreciate your hanging out with us. Uh, we appreciate uh, Bob Nab, Nab with a K, uh, hanging out with us and uh, drinking this great beer, eating the fantastic empanadas. They're really good. Uh, join us uh, next month. I believe we have Casa. Casa Carmen. Uh, the following okay. month, we have Penswood's Winery, Ooh. and so yeah, we got some really good stuff good coming ones up. Coming up. We're, we're in talk. We're in always in conversations yep. with different people. So uh, go to the website journeymoreoften.today, and you'll find Check out. All follow that us on social and follow us at our Journey More Often YouTube channel. Yep. And we're going to be uploading this later yep. uh, for that. In the meantime, uh, thank you very much and enjoy life. Journey more often.